I just finished watching my favorite Outlander season 7 episode. Episode 5, named Singapore, was the most elite. It nailed each storyline, each inclination, and each person. Here is my audit. I snicker at myself, truly. At the point when I saw the episode title, I looked profoundly and thought it had an emblematic significance, yet it ended up being a reference to another fight, Clash of Singapore. All through the episode, Jamie attempts to persuade his leader that the English wouldn't go after Vale Land. But the powerful commander doesn't believe him because why would he believe a Highlander's word? This episode was about imbalance experienced by various characters. To start with, we saw Jamie, albeit an accomplished officer battling to make himself understood. Regardless of whether it implied losing a fight or the existences of numerous men, the obstinate commandant didn't pay attention to Jamie. And Jamie was correct in the end. The English went after, as Jamie said, and they needed to empty the post. As previously stated, various characters displayed various forms of inequality. Once more Claire endured on account of sexists. The army doctor did not treat her with respect, did not pay attention to what she had to say, or even believed that she knew anything. Fortunately, Denzel Tracker was there as somebody more open to the possibility of a lady specialist. Yet, it was miserable that a man needed to help Claire in that. Things were similar for Bray in the 20th century, but she was responsible for everything on her own. On her first day, her new co-workers locked her up in a tunnel. She had to get out on her own. Yet, coincidentally, in the passage, there was an entryway-looking blue region that was exceptionally clearly. Bree sprinted through it, but nothing transpired. I feel like this is another entryway that empowers time travel. Be that as it may, for what reason didn't Bree express anything about it to Roger? I'm not sure. We will get familiar with it in the accompanying episodes without a doubt. Jamie was the victim of the episode's greatest injustice, in my opinion. He received disciplinary action at school for speaking Gaelic, a language he was not permitted to use. How can a parent tell their children that? How many you say that you can't communicate in your language now and again? That scene was hard to watch. I additionally need to discuss different characters, obviously. William and the hunter's fate on the road was quite unexpected. I thought the man they saw on the road was a little too friendly, but I thought it was hospitality from the 18th century. I didn't figure I would see 18th century chronic executioners. Clearly, this family baits outsiders into the house and kills them when they are sleeping. What next? I would try and prefer not to consider it. I recently completed the process of watching Hannah Pohl, so I don't have to plunge into this. Well, isn't it great that William was there? Committing his most memorable demonstration of killing, in addition, does he enjoy Rachel? He probably does, but does Rachel also like him? At the point when they said goodbye, Denzel comprehended that something was going on. In any case, Rachel additionally appeared to be keen on youthful Ian. Is it true or not that she is simply agreeable or am I getting some unacceptable signs here? To be 100% genuine with you, I simply maintain that youthful Ian should be cheerful. The boy went through enough. I'm one-sided, likely on the grounds that youthful Ian has been in the story far longer than William. Simply this episode, we discovered that he really has a child. At the point when he figured he could never have any kids and that something was off with him, he learned about his child, who he named Ian James. 